Good morning, all. I had my live stream on, and it was rebroadcasting right to me. Better turn that off. Well, Happy New Year to everybody. I uh, would say I enjoyed my week off, but uh, it was very busy, and I uh, accomplished a lot of honeydews and mother-in-law dues uh, as I installed a lot of new stuff to help my mother-in-law and father-in-law be comfortable at home from new toilets to uh, handicap accessible bars and new humidifier and different things. So it was busy holidays, but we got it all accomplished. Well, most of it anyways, uh, enough to consider it a success. Uh, but we're happy to be back here. I thanks to Tim uh, for doing a great job as always filling in for me. And don't worry, Tim, I did not cringe one moment during any part of your sermon. Uh, you know, you, you always, it's always a risk when you let somebody else have your pulpit. And uh, especially Tim, because Tim is not bashful. He doesn't hold back. Uh, but uh, I appreciate Tim, and he, he does a fabulous job. So thank you, Tim, for filling in uh, for me uh, as well. Uh, so uh, as we get ready to worship here, we're going to cover uh, a few uh, announcements. Um, uh, if uh, Some of them are in your bulletin, some of them are not. Um, one, if you have joys or concerns or corrections to any joys and concerns that you see here, because if there's typos or in, anything incorrect, you can blame me. I do my best to get it to Martha and make it as accurate as possible, uh, and she corrects what she thinks she knows is wrong, uh, but we do make mistakes, so if, if there's anything that needs to be added, corrected, or amended, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and we also have a dedicated prayer chain. Uh, Helen Henley uh, is, does a great job of uh, getting information out as well. Uh, if you are not getting emails from me and you would like to get emails from me, uh, please make sure that you get in touch with me. Um, actually, I, we probably need to change the email address on the front of here. But anyways, I have cards that I can give you with my email address if you would like it, or just hand me your email address and I'll make sure you get on our distribution list. Uh, we get a lot of information out every week uh, via email. Um, if you're not part, uh, 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 if you want to do something great for the new year, uh, I suggest making Sunday school part of your New Year's resolution. Uh, we just have a fun time in Sunday school, uh, and, and uh, right now we're just meeting informally around nine o'clock ish. Uh, if you're a few minutes late, it's no problem. Bring coffee, whatever. Come and sit with us. We we spread out and. Just sit and, and uh, we, we are going through the, the apostles right now, uh, but it's, it's an open discussion time where we can talk and learn and share uh, with each other and uh, you'll learn a lot uh, and you'll get fed spiritually, so uh, join us there. Um, there are offering envelopes in the back of the church lobby. Um, and uh, if you've been a member here for a while, you'll see your name is at the top of the box. Um, if if there, I think there's some blank ones out there you can take, but if there's not and you need some, you can get a hold of Bob Grout, uh, but there is one correction. The email address for Bob Grout, there's no dash in it. It's just bobgrout at ymail.com, or you can call the phone number right there, uh, and he'll make sure that you... Uh, get a box. Also, there are several, several red poinsettias that have been paid for. They're free to you if you want to take them home. Um, so if you would like a free poinsettia, free, hint free, free, please take, please take a red poinsettia home. Uh, they, they, they need a good home. So, um, uh, so please take those. Um, also, um, please don't for, uh, uh, forget that we um, um, are always, if you have food, uh, donations, personal care items, stuff like that, we are always collecting those things. Uh, we also have baby basics. Uh, 
uh, a ministry that is run out of this church that supplies diapers to uh, working families in the area that are struggling. And I mean, they give out thousands and thousands of diapers. And um, if you would like to give actual physical donations or monetary donations to any of our ministries, uh, just let me know and I'll let you know how to direct those ministries. Uh, we also support um, a couple local food pantries um, and we can give uh, direct donations like uh, canned goods and, and box foods and stuff like that. Or if you'd like to give monetary donations to those as well, uh, please let me know that we support two local area food pantries um, uh, with that. Uh, and also, uh, if you've gotten bored, don't forget, we still have a whole bunch of games and movies and stuff out in the bin out on our porch. And if you want to take, borrow, keep, whatever, that's what that bin is for. If you've got games, puzzles, or movies you don't watch anymore, put them in the bin. If you want to take one out of there, take it out, use it. Um, uh, that's what that's out there for, because a lot of people aren't getting out like they used to. You're bored with the things that you have. You want a new puzzle, new game, a different movie. Um, there's a whole bunch out there. I cannot verify the content. <laughs> or the quality of what's out there. Some of it's dated. Uh, some of it might be VHS. Uh, but there's things that people are, are wanting to share. So that's a free share box out there for anybody uh, who's interested. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church? Yes, Jim. Anybody who's Wow. So if you're interested, uh, Kroger's uh, down here in uh, Cleves uh, is giving out antibody tests for $25. In about 15 minutes, you can find out if you have the antibodies in your system. Uh, you said it was your niece that went and got tested. She didn't know if she had it or not, and she got tested, and she has the antibodies. So apparently at one point she had uh, COVID and didn't, didn't even realize it. So, But if you're interested, that is available down at Kroger's. Thank you. All right. Any other announcements for the good of the church? Martha. I put up a new flower calendar. Oh, yes, here. I forgot. So uh, if you're interested in sponsoring altar flowers, uh, there's a new calendar out in the uh, uh, hallway out there. And if you want to sponsor flowers in memory of anybody, a birthday, anniversary, a passing, uh, or just want to sponsor them uh, any given week, uh, just put your name down there, get in touch with Martha, uh, and she'll get with you about the cost. Uh, but we appreciate having altar flowers uh, and they are certainly a, a beautiful addition every week to our services. So if you would like to sponsor those one week, uh, please uh, uh, go ahead and sign up. And uh, you, you can look ahead to the dates for special anniversaries and other dates. One more thing. We're going to leave Christmas decorations up until next week. And then if folks could stay after church on next week, we'll take everything down. Okay. So next week after service, if you could stay... The more hands, the faster it goes. We could have it done in about 20 minutes. Everything put away, packed up uh, for the season. Uh, so if you could stay after service next week, that would be wonderful. Um, also, today, just to give you a warning, every week we are going to do a fun kids song in our worship. But that means you have to participate for it to be fun. So we're doing a sermon series called Back to the Basics, and like today is about Noah's Ark, and so the song is Rise and Shine, and Noah and his Arky Arky. Some of you might remember that from Vacation Bible School. So put on your smiles. I can see you smile through your mask. It's okay. And we are going to clap in certain spots, and I'm going to try to do this. I wish my wife was here because she has talent, and I don't. <laughs> I'm not very coordinated, but we're going to try. But let's have fun and worship today uh, and worship our God. So um, with that, there's no more announcements. Let us stand and begin our worship service with our call to worship. Please stand with me. 
O Lord God Almighty, you are holy. We stand today and sing praises to you. O holy God, you are both merciful and mighty. Your presence is found in the three persons of our blessed Trinity. Let us join the saints of old and praise your holy name. For you are the beginning and the end, our God for eternity. O precious Lord, you truly are a holy and great God. And Lord, we have gathered together together to worship and honor you with joyful praise. Lord, may you be honored in all that we do today. Lord, be with our service. May they hear your words through our music, through the scripture, and through all the actions that we do. Uh, and Lord, may everything we do point to you, for you are deserving of all of our glory. Be with us uh, in, in all of our efforts this week, uh, and let our praise start today and not end until we gather again and start new praise next week. All of this we ask and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. As we come to our time of joys and concerns, I um, uh, wanted to let you know uh, Patty Carlson had been on our uh, prayer request and uh, she has passed away. So continue prayers for Patty Carlson's family. Uh, I'd like to share joy for Tim. Again, thank you, Tim, for filling in. That was uh, uh, nice to be able to sit on the couch and, uh, from Cleveland and, and watch uh, the service, and uh, uh, so we appreciate that uh, on that. Uh, Carla, uh, who was planning to be here today, and that's why her beautiful face isn't over there in the lectern, uh, elected to spend the week with her parents. Uh, her mom and dad are still uh, struggling with their health concerns, um, and uh, her mom's not uh, reco recovering quite as fast as we had hoped, so she's staying there the week to uh, help her mom and dad, so just continue to keep them uh, in your prayers. Um, uh, uh, last check, Laura, you know, is continuing to do better, um, and so continue prayers for that. 
Uh, prayers for Virginia. Uh, uh, if you haven't met Virginia, she is a wonderful lady right here. She's been visiting us through the Advent uh, season, and uh, she was at a car wash and had a little fall, and, uh, and now she has a nice blue accessory to wear for the next six weeks. And uh, so we'll pray for a speedy and full recovery for you uh, um, uh, on that. And it also saves you, you don't have to ask her what happened now. So I just saved you 20 stories, right? That's good. So uh, on that. Are there any other joys and concerns to share uh, today? Okay, Tula is not progressing as well. Okay. And I need to check with you to see if I've got the right phone number because I've tried calling a few times and I don't know if she's just not answering or... Okay, but uh, on that. So continued prayer for Tula. Um, uh, she, she had uh, some serious colon surgery. Uh, so continued prayers for her. So, yes, Beth? Melita Wells, what was the last name? Ellington. Ellington. Melita El Wells Ellington had a stroke and is in intensive care. So prayers for her and her family. Any others? Yes. My uncle, Kurt Keithy, is, has COVID and he's in his 90s. Well, in his 90s, not in the bed, but he, he's out of the hospital. So uh, Martha's uncle Kurt uh, is in his 90s and has COVID. So prayers for him. And uh, I think we just need prayers for 2021 in general because 2020 certainly was not anything anybody expected. Yes. John? Okay. John Mendenhall is having hip replacement. Thank you, Jeannie. So prayers for John Mendenhall for his hip replacement tomorrow. Any others? All right, let us be in a time of prayer and then we'll gather or we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you today and there are many things that lay heavy on our hearts. Uh, Lord, we have friends that have passed away. We have family members and friends who are struggling with some very serious health concerns. Lord, we have many other people who have been devastated one way or another by this coronavirus. Lord, we have people who continue to remain and struggle and strife uh, over our political situations. Uh, Lord, this has not been a happy new year for a lot of people. And Lord, uh, we come to you as your people, as we are called to do by your Holy Scripture. We are called to gather with one another and pray and we are called to pray as your community of believers. And Lord, we have faith that you are a God who hears our prayers and we offer them to you today. Lord, may it be your will that uh, you will provide healing and comfort where it is needed. And Lord, where people need it most, will you provide lightness in their moments of dark. Lord, to use us as your instruments to provide comfort, hope, and faith and Lord, we also come to you to celebrate our many blessings. Lord, we were very blessed for uh, over the holidays to have what we did have. Uh, Lord, uh, it may have not been what we all expected, but we do cherish what we did have. Lord, I thank you for this generous congregation and their gift to me. And Lord, I thank you for Tim and his filling in for me as well. 
And Lord, we just ask your hand to be on this church as we move forward into this new year. Lord, may we continue to grow to become the church that you have called us to be. Uh, may we not only be the big church on the hill, but we be the light that other people see. May we be a beacon of hope, and uh, may we provide the truth that people so desperately need to hear. And Lord, as we come together as your people, we remember the words that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the reading of our scriptures today. Our first reading comes from Genesis chapter 6, verses 9 through 22. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it leaving below the roof an opening one cubic high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as a food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Now from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand. And offerings. Lord, may you be honored by what we have given, but more importantly, may you be honored and blessed by what we do with them. May we use these gifts to further your kingdom. All of this we ask and pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we have our special song, Rise and Shine. So have some fun, try to sing along, and I'm going to try to get the clap in where it belongs. <laughs> Lord told Noah he's gonna be a funny, funny Lord. Told Noah there's gonna be a funny, funny. Get those children out of the money, money children of the Lord. The Lord told Noah to build him an arky, arky Lord. Told Noah to build him an arky, arky, build it. 
And uh, we do have one additional prayer request that was in the offering uh, for Helen Johnson. So we'll add Helen to our prayers. All right, well, welcome to the new year and the new sermon series that we're calling back to the basics. And I hope you had fun with our children's song. It may have taken some of you back uh, to your childhood or watching your kids at VBS or different things. Uh, and, you know, we, we need to be willing to have fun when we come and worship God. You know, I mean, we have a God that's created uh, so many wonderful things and uh, we need to be joyful in our praise uh, to Him. Well, uh, one of the most impressive attractions I've ever seen in my life was the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. And I don't know if you can see it on that far slide to your right. I tried to draw a yellow line on there, um, but my sons are only about that big in that picture, just to give you the size of this thing. I mean, the one picture really doesn't do it justice. When you get up next to this thing, it is incredibly huge. The story of Noah's Ark is one of the first stories we ever learn as kids. There are hundreds of children's books with the same title. And Noah's Ark has been the theme of baby nurseries, and you'll find it on children's clothing and all kinds of stuff. And as popular as the story is, it is also a story that has created division and controversy even among Christians. And I could do a whole sermon series just on the controversies. For example, there are Christian scholars that believe that this is an allegorical story, meaning that the flood story never happened. It is a fictitious story just put into the Bible to teach us a lesson. There are scholars that believe the story of the flood wasn't even a Christian story to begin with, that it was borrowed from other ancient civilization stories. And of course, we have the familiar battle between science and the Bible. Science says it's a matter of physics, that there's no way that Noah could build an ark of that size and get that many uh, animals and all that weight to even float. Some say it's a matter of logistics. How could Noah get all the animals of all the world on his ark? And then there's a the matter of ge geology. And there's questions if there's even evidence that the whole world or the entire earth could have been covered underwater during the time frame that the Bible says that it happened. And there are lots and lots of other questions. Now, I will say that the Ark Encounter down in Kentucky does have some interesting theories on how to answer all of these questions. I'm not sure if I uh, agree with all of them or understand all of them, and I don't know that anybody does have all the answers. But personally, I believe it was a real event because I have faith that the same God who created the world could also have created the flood. And the story of the flood is also referenced in other scriptures throughout the Bible, which to me adds to the validity of the account. But today's sermon is not about addressing the authenticity of the event. Today I want to focus on a different aspect, so let's go to our scriptures again. In Genesis verse 5 it says, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of human heart was only evil all the time. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. You could say things were not good. The world was very ugly. People were living however they wanted. People had moved a long way from God. People were doing what people wanted to do. And I don't know about you, but slowly I see our world moving to a more and more corrupt state where things that were once considered a sin are now celebrated. 
And all of the sin and corruption is painful to our God. And verse 6, it says, The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. God's heart was deeply troubled. Man was the pinnacle of God's creation. It was the only part of creation that the creation story said was very good. Man was created to be in the image of God. Man was created to be in relationship with God. We are special to God. And when our holy God sees his own creation choose evil over good, it is painful for him. We hurt God when we sin. Pardon me. Yet in all this evil, there was hope. The scripture says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Continues to say that Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah was different. Noah must have seemed like the oddball of the world. The world probably accused Noah of believing in a myth. The world probably thought that Noah was outdated in his beliefs. The world probably told Noah that he was missing out. And the world probably laughed at Noah and his religious family. And not only was Noah righteous, Noah was obedient. And down in verse 22, the scripture says that Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Now, Noah was already 500 years old when this story started. I bet you didn't know that. 500 years old. And just imagine the task at hand. Noah, who was already at odds with the world, now begins making a huge ark. And he didn't have our cranes and tools of today. He had rudimentary tools building this huge ark and preparing for a coming judgment. You know, in some ways, we are supposed to be like Noah. We are supposed to be the oddballs. We are supposed to be different. Earlier, you heard me read these words from Romans 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And unfortunately, our churches are moving to accommodate the world's standards. We are not supposed to be pleasing to the world. We are to be pleasing to God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. 1 Peter chapter 2 tells us this, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Isn't that something to consider? We are God's special possession. And we are to leave the world of darkness and live in his light. John writes in 1 John 2, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. The things of this world are temporary, and chasing the things of this world will lead to eternal destruction. Eternal life only comes from living out the will of God. And Jesus said in Matthew 7, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few 
find it. So in this passage, Jesus is telling us that we are not to take the easy path of the world. He's very clear that this is the path most will take. The harder way to go is the way we are supposed to go. We are supposed to be the few, the proud, the saved. And salvation is the key, for there is a judgment day coming. Tim shared last week how in the final days there will be a final judgment. And either we are saved and have heaven, or we are condemned and we have hell. Listen to these words from Peter. 2 Peter 3. Above all, you must understand that in the last day, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Peter confirms the story of creation. Peter confirms the story of the flood, the story of the judgment, and the story of destruction. You see, the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. God destroyed the unrighteous in the time of Noah. Everyone was destroyed. Men, women, children, all of them. Only Noah and his family was spared. And Peter warns us, that there is another judgment coming. And he says, everyone will be judged and any ungodly people, all ungodly people will be destroyed. And in verse 8, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God does not want anyone to perish. God wants everyone to come to repentance. And that is part of our job. You see, judgment is coming and as long as each of us has a breath in our lungs, our job is to share the love of God so that all people can have a chance for repentance. And in verse 10 it says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? Peter asks, what kind of people ought you to be? We should be people like Noah. He says you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. You see, we need to get serious about our faith in 2021. We need to know that every day is one day closer to the final day. We are supposed to live out our life as God's chosen people. But most importantly, I don't want to see anyone see the final destruction. 
I want my life to be an example that leads others to faith through Jesus Christ. <coughs> we have to stand firm in our faith. We must stand for God's word. We must stand for God's ways. We should not be bashful for standing for our faith. Now it is grace, it is by grace that we are saved. We cannot save ourselves. But when we receive that grace of salvation, we have an obligation to denounce sin. We have an obligation to live our lives according to God's pleasing and perfect will. And I believe God is always true to his word. I believe our God is a God of love. But I also believe our God is a God of righteousness and a God of judgment. And I have faith in God. And I have faith in God's salvation. And so the question is, what do you believe? And will it change how you live? Will it make you rethink your goals for 2021? Will it make you rethink about what you stand for? Will it make you rethink about your positions in the church? Your position on God's scripture? Too many times we've moved away from God's word and it kills me when I hear people say, well, I just don't believe that a God who loves people would do that. But God's word is true. God's word says that judgment is coming. Could be this afternoon, it could be next week, it could be another thousand years, I don't know. But there are people who do not know the grace and love of Jesus Christ. And our number one goal this year should be to share that love and to share that hope of salvation with all people. For judgment is coming. Will you stand firm in your beliefs? Will you be part of the few, the proud, and the saved? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Lord, you're not only a God of love, but you are a God that is holy. And because of sin, we are separated from you. But you gave us the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection covers our sins. And that we are faithful and just to come to you, that you will forgive us and wash us clean of our sins and make us worthy to be called your children. And Lord, when we come to become your children, let us live a life worthy of your children. Help lead us and guide us and help restore us when we fall and keep us strong in our days of battle so that we may proclaim your gospel to those who do not yet know it. Lord, let us be a people that just uh, have a passion to, to be devout followers, a passion to be devout to your word, passionate about standing for your truth, and passionate about defeating sin. Lord, let us always be a people that point people to you. Let our grace and mercy uh, uh, be a reflection of your grace and mercy. And let us love people and let us share with them your great news. All of this we ask and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand for our closing song. Our closing hymn is hymn number 714. I know whom I have believed, verses 1 and 2.
Continuing with the words from Peter, Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Let us go and be firm in our faith. Go now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.